Hey folks, Attorney Andrew Branke here from Law of Self-Defense with a special, relatively short show for all of you. It's actually a segment from my live stream of today. I was covering the Alec Baldwin pre-trial hearing. They were arguing a motion by the defense to dismiss the manslaughter indictment against Alec Baldwin with prejudice so it could never be brought back again based on the claim by the defense that the state had destroyed exculpatory evidence. I'm not going to go into all the meat of the day. It was five hours of hearings today. Much of it was a slog fest, as the defense has been prone to do, waste a lot of time. But the last 35, 40 minutes were absolute fire, fire from this judge, Mary Marlowe Summer, who was also the judge for the Hannah Gutierrez trial, also a manslaughter trial over the shooting death of cinematographer Helena Hutchins on the movie set of Rust. So this is, of course, about Alec Baldwin's upcoming trial for the involuntary manslaughter of cinematographer Helena Hutchins on the movie set of Rust. When he was holding what he knew to be a real gun in his hand, pointed it directly at Helena Hutchins, cocked a hammer, pressed the trigger, never checked to make sure there was no live ammo in the gun, and discharged the bullet into Helena Hutchins' right armpit. It traversed her body, broke her spine, exited the left side of her body, penetrated the body of director Joel Souza, and finally embedded itself in the shoulder of Joel Souza. He would survive the gunshot wound. Helena Hutchins, sadly, will not. And the very highly paid legal defense team for Alec Baldwin, uh, basically Manhattan lawyers from uh, Emmanuel Quinn, a top 50 worldwide law firm, highly paid. Uh, They don't have the law on their side. They don't have the facts on their side for their client. So they're pounding the table a lot, wasting a lot of time with a lot of verbiage in their zealous representation advocacy for their client, Alec Baldwin. Now, to my mind, this has been a involuntary manslaughter case, easy conviction. Every day of the week and twice on Sundays, I was saying that from the day after the shooting of Helena Hutchins occurred, she was shot and killed October 21st, 2021. I did my first blog post on this on October 22nd, 2021, and have been following it continuously ever since. All my coverage, by the way, of this Baldwin shooting of Elena Hutchins can be found at lawofselfdefense.com slash Baldwin. It's freely available to everybody. Today was a hearing that was supposed to be two hours. It started last Friday at one o'clock in the afternoon, wrapped up for the day at 5.30 and continued today for another five hours, almost entirely because of the time wasting by the defense. And when the defense finally rested their argument on this particular motion, this judge was on fire, fire. So you can watch the entire five hours plus of today's live stream coverage, or if time is more limited, I do encourage you to watch this last 35 to 40 minutes of today's proceedings because it was absolute gold. So with that out of the way, I'll hand it over to all of you. (laughs) Enjoy this ride. Talk to you soon. Court is um, going to um, put this in a written order, and it will be uh, the court's decision, and it will be uh, filed sometime uh, Friday. I will tell you this. I will not take any supplemental briefing on this. It will be discarded. We're done arguing this case. Do not give me a supplemental briefing whatsoever. (laughs) <laughs> on this uh, motion to dismiss the indictment based on destruction of evidence. <laughs> um, I'm going to move on. I am done. <laughs> I am done with you people. I am done. I am not hearing about this nonsense anymore. Anybody have any doubts about how she's going to rule on this motion to dismiss the indictment with prejudice because of the state's purported destruction of evidence? <laughs> I will hear no supplemental briefing on this argument. It will be discarded, (laughs) discarded. It will be disintegrated. (laughs) On to the 
um, scheduling order because today is the pre-trial conference and docket call. It was also the deadline for the plea. So the docket call is uh, is only to determine whether you're going to trial. And um, obviously you other you would have told me you had a plea today and the deadline is today. So um, we're no going plea. to continue on with our um, jury selection on Tuesday, the 9th. And then we're going to carry on with the trial 10th, 11th, 12th, 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th of uh, July. Okay. Yes, Your Honor. Um, we have a uh, um, a hearing on the um, motions in limine um, on the um, day before jury selection, as I understand yes, it. Yes, and, you and do. I, right. And I understand that that will be, my understanding is that that will be in person, um, which of course we would prefer if that's what the courts understand. Obviously it's the court's decision, but that's what we were hoping. That's fine. I prefer in, in person. Ms. Morrissey? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And then one other thing that's in the scheduling order that I think I should bring to the court's attention, which is, um, yes, that is the schedule, but you you told us that if there's anything that causes an issue to bring it immediately to the court's attention. The state has um, disclosed 44 witnesses, including 13 expert witnesses. Um, and I don't know um, what to say to the court other than I don't know how we could get through one fifth of that. And so I don't know whether that is just an attempt to um, make this process unfair or whether they intend to call 44 witnesses and 13 experts, but they have disclosed that, um, for an eight day trial. And it doesn't make, this is rich coming from, uh, so he, he's complaining about how many witnesses the state has put on their witness list. Anyone not on their list, they're not going to be allowed to call as a witness. Right. But he's complaining, your honor, the state has all these witnesses. <laughs> this is the same def defense team that has like, 10 or 12 defense lawyers going against two prosecutors. That's not a problem, I guess. And it's not a problem. They're allowed to do that. But they're complaining now about how many witnesses the state has put on its list. Make any sense to me. And so I wanted to alert the court to that. Ms. Morrissey. Mommy. Mommy. Um, Your Honor, I, I have always had some concerns that we did not have enough time to try the case. I will also say that uh, the defense has filed extensive witness lists, and I think their witness lists total 25 or 30 witnesses. Uh, so, I again, I, I don't know whether they're intending to call those witnesses or whether that was just gamesmanship. Uh, but, but if at the end of the day this is a 50-witness trial, we will not have enough time if we have to stop on the 19th. So I, I would ask the court... Um, it, it, if the trial goes beyond uh, the 19th, no. I mean, does the court have time to take us all the way to, let's say, the 26th of July? Your Honor, this, the defense. No, no, no. Wait, wait, would you stop? We're doing the 19th. You all said the 19th. Both sides said the 19th. I can play back the log notes. Both of you said this should be fine. Okay. I'm going, I will, I will split up that time frame. We can certainly put you on a clock, but, you know, um, we can talk about how much time you, you're, you're going to craft here. We, you well, know. Your Honor, one of the, one of the reasons that we filed a motion for an exhibit list uh, is so. So the truth is. Folks, it's important to understand most intentional murder cases are like two days, one to three days. Two days is pretty typical for an intentional murder cases. A lot of murder cases, you have jury selection in the morning, you hear the argument during the day, and there's a verdict by the end of the day. One day for a murder conviction. Here we have an involuntary manslaughter case, and they have eight days. Scheduled for trial. Eight days. There's no reason on the facts of this case that this should take eight days. No reason. I have every reason to believe the defense would drag this out to 80 days if they thought they could get away with it. So that we don't have to spend all of our time in trial 
having the jury out of the room while the parties argue the exhibits. And of course, I can't get the defense to agree to just file an exhibit list because they feel like they're turning their hand. And quite frankly, even if you ordered an exhibit list, my guess is they're going to have every single Pell video on it and every single uh, Rust movie set video on it. And that's just going to be a, a, a sham. So I'm trying to come up with some kind of a way to try to get the defense attorneys to, to behave in a manner uh, that, that would enable us to at least to a minimal degree work together on procedural issues. I've never been able to quite make that happen yet in this case. If we are objecting to exhibits, every time one of the lawyers tries to enter an exhibit into evidence, uh, this case, not only is it not going to be done on the 19th, it's not going to be done on the 26th. And, and 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 I I will I will tell you, Judge, that that while I I appreciate the court's position uh, with regard to the timing going up to the nineteenth, um, I b- based on the cross examinations that we have seen, uh, in particular yes, from yes, Mr. Spyro, yes, yes. Uh, the, the, there's no way this case will be done by the nineteenth, and, and and then then we're going to find ourselves in a situation where. If the court tries to tries to shut Mr. Spyro down, who's by the way famous for this kind of conduct, uh, th- then if you do that, then he's going to start complaining that that you, that that the defendant hasn't had an opportunity and you're violating his rights and so on and so forth. So I'm trying to nip this in the bud right now. I'm not getting very far. We're not going to be done on the 19th. I mean, the the, the state certainly uh, w- would be done on the 19th, but the defense has. They, they've got they've got all the top brass from from the sheriff's department on their witness list. I don't know why they're calling them, but they're on their witness list. So I'm I'm not sure what to do about it with the current situation. We will not be done on the 19th. I'm not sure we'd be done on the 26th. May I respond, Your Honor? Yes. We haven't filed our witness list. They filed their witness list. Their witness list is 44 witnesses. Their list has 13 experts. Our list in our case will take, I would think, approximately a day. Um, maybe two maximum. What did you so, say? Your case will take a day. Yeah, cor- correct. It, our <laughs> case is not going to be a lengthy case. Uh, it's my prediction. I'm of course a defense lawyer. They have to go for, first. They have to prove their case. Okay. <laughs> Second of all, I will tell the court that um, what I did in this proceeding with objections and how hard I fought the admission of exhibits is actually a pretty good reflection of my career, which apparently Ms. Morrissey knows so well. I haven't had any problems um, to date. Um, and the reality is I don't intend to object very much. And I have a feeling I'm not going to have that many objections to that many, that many exhibits, as long as they comply with the rules of evidence. I don't, I don't really do very much other than ask questions. And if witnesses tell the truth, the examinations are shorter. And when I have something like what happened with Mr. Haig, of course that took longer and as well, it should have in a matter of this importance. So I, I, I think you have a good sense for how we're going to conduct, um, our defense. Um, but a lot of those statements are just inaccurate. The judge just made a note of that. <laughs> Did you see that? When he said, Your Honor, I think our case will be a day, maybe two. She was like, Oh yeah? Oh yeah? That's the representation you're making to this court? Right. We haven't even filed the witness list. It's her witness list that has been filed. It's 44 witnesses and 13 ex- experts. And I would urge the court to, to consider that and ask yourself, is that not gamesmanship? It's not on me to design my case first. It's on the prosecution. And prosecutors have a duty that has been totally lost in this case and totally lost in this case from the grand jury on through. And we keep watching it and we keep seeing it. And, and, and at a certain point, you can almost play back in your mind the kinds of things. the game. So, so right. that's, that's the record I want to make. All right. So I heard you say one or two days <laughs> for, your, for your defense, <laughs> for the defense's case. All right. So with eight days of trial, <laughs> I'm going to give Ms. Morrissey five and I'm going to give you three oh! for the possibility of you being limited to two and Ms. Morrissey being given six just on how things are going with the cross examination and things like that. Wow. Okay. I, I don't know. I don't know if I totally understand the court, but, to, to, but it's <laughs> the ultimate outcome of what the court is saying is fine. Insofar as obviously, 
to the degree I'm 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 uh, Miss Morrissey, whatever she wants to call me, I am going to want to cross examine the witnesses. I'm sure right. your honors going to want to know the truth, want the truth to come out in that courtroom right. also. And so as long as I have an opportunity to cross examine the witnesses and the court does not allow cu cumulative witnesses in testimony, right. then I don't think that the schedule was a problem. Right. And, and just for, yeah. And I'm the one alerting the court. I'm not the one who disclosed 44 witnesses and 13 right. experts. All right. OK. All right. In my experience. They don't use all those witnesses. I'm sure that's your experience as well, too, both of you. Okay, well, so what I'm trying to make clear is this, is that I'm going to give, I'm really relying on your one to two days, okay? <laughs> so, but I don't also want to be in a situation, Mr. Spiro, where you say, well, we, you know, now we really need, you know, to really go into our witnesses and things like that based upon, based upon the state's case. So at this point, it's going to be five and three. However, depending on how long these cross-examinations are taking and how, how fluid we're going with the states. This is the price. I like this judge. This is the price the defense is paying for what they just did Friday and today. Cross-examining Lucian Haig. The judge is now exacting her price. She's saying, all right, you're telling me you only need one or two days? Tell you what. Tell you what. I'll give you three days. I'll give you 50% more time than you just told me you needed. But I reserve the right. I'll give you three days, and, this, and the, that would give the state five. Five to three. But I reserve the right to reduce your days to two and give the state six. If I see you wasting the state's days, on this kind of cross-examination. That's what she's saying between the lines. This guy just stepped hard on his own D-I-C-K. Hard. And the judge is letting him know. Bad move, Alex Spiro. In this case, then it's going to be six and two. two. <laughs> okay, I'm just I'm letting Understood you know they're going, they're going to get get that many, and you're on notice of that. And I'm not going to move this into the 26th. You know, I have plenty yeah. of other obligations to other defendants and the prosecution. I understand that, Your Honor. And so, just to answer one question, the court rhetorically posed to me is no. In a, in an eight day trial, I am not. Other than if a prosecutor is is playing games and trying to get an improper strategic advantage over defendant. No, I have not seen 44 witnesses and 13 experts disclosed in an eight-day case. And it is nothing other than the tax that these prosecutors take. And what I've a never liner. had issues with other prosecutors <laughs> like this. And because of my career being somewhat public, you would know and Miss Morrissey would know. And it's never happened. It's only happened in this case. And so this is the same defense that files all these ridiculous motions begging the judge to go over page limits <laughs> the reality is what we're going to ask for is the, the court to have Miss Morrissey give in a realistic, fair witness list and expert list to the defense so that I can then quickly tell you all what my witnesses are going to be in response to those witnesses and the exhibits. They go first. Yeah, That's the witnesses anyway. We, 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 we do, Your Honor, but, how, but, but this doesn't accomplish what the, the, the spirit of the court's order. And the spirit of the way this is supposed to work is the prosecutor tells us what their case is going to be. That's why they go first. That's why they have the burden of proof. That's how this works. And then the defense does their case in response. Obviously, I can't tell until the state rests exactly what we're going to do. And so it's unfair to the defense and the court should not have this kind of gamesmanship to allow them to, di to disclose 44 witnesses, which is not a realistic um, assessment of their case. It's literally done to hide the ball. The court knows that. I know that. The 13 experts are, are obviously duplicative and absurd. The court knows that. I know that. And so the, the, I urge the court to not allow them to do that. And to then, and then it, that's doesn't, that's not the spirit of this order. And, right. and as okay. I talk to local. Right. New Mexico, right. Okay. Ms. Morrissey. I, I'm not modifying my witness list and this is why. Um, if during trial, I decide I'm not going to call this person. Instead, I'm going to call this person. If I remove one of those people now, these people are going to go up in arms and say, judge, that person wasn't on her final witness list. It, it leaves me absolutely no flexibility. And I can tell you with these lawyers, that's something that I need most. Mr. Spiro can complain all day, but the truth of the matter is, 
is that we have in good faith gone to the defense and said, hey, there's a terabyte of discovery. Will you guys agree to just to just to a, a deadline to, to file exhibit lists so that we know what you're going to be using and you know what we're going to be using? No way. Uh, that tells you where these people are coming from. They are not going to cooperate. They're not going to do it today and they're not going to do it two weeks from now. Okay, listen, I don't know where, you know, you say this is really surprising to you, Mr. Spiro. This is not surprising in New Mexico. If you look at the witness lists. <laughs> this is another. <laughs> this is another swipe by the judge here at Alex Spiro and the Baldwin defense because they're all from Manhattan. New York City. <laughs> Remember those old, uh, what was it, a salsa or a chili something commercial? New York City. She's saying, listen, Alex Spiro, Mr. Partner, Emmanuel Quinn, $1,000 billable rate. I don't know how you do things there in that big city, but here in New Mexico, this is fine. Sit down. <laughs> of the prosecution, this is normal. So I'm not going to make her reduce them. I have seen, even in the Hannah Gutierrez trial, that they immediately disperse the witnesses, say, I'm not going to call these five, et cetera, et cetera. That may not be your best scenario, but that's how it's going to go. I'm not going to make them, everybody, you too, I'm not going to make them eliminate that. Your witness list is due. Okay. Understood, Your Honor. Um, the, and I understand the court's um, directive. I would only ask that we be given 48 hours notice on, on witness order. That's all I'm asking for with that many witnesses in eight days. We need 24 hours on witness. At the end of the day, at the, we're going to do what we did before. At the end of the day, they're going to tell you who they expect to call the next day. Yes. A and I will do my best, but I cannot guarantee the order of witnesses if I've got people flying in and planes get delayed. I have it. I have it. I have it. It'll be reasonable. So that's not even 24 hours. The judge is saying at the end of each day, the defense will learn what the witnesses will be the next day. And the state has flexibility if there's uncontrollable you know, travel issues. Here, Here's the other issue that could create delay. I believe the court is intending to have Wadir last for one day. It is my guess with this group of defense attorneys, that's not going to happen. So maybe we want to address that because if Wadir goes into two days, two and a half days, we got problems. I've never not picked a jury in one day. I can't right. imagine that this right. would be the first time. By the way, I don't know. We went into, we went into um, private board deer. I don't know if, uh, uh, you know, it's going to require both of you to want to do that and the court. It depends on how things are going with the jury and whether anybody's going to likely taint the jury and we need to go private. But the other thing is we're calling 39 at a time. And so there's not going to be 79 waiting. There's going to be 39 and we're going to get the next 39. And that way you are going to be able to formulate on each panel, you know, whether we need to the next panel. That makes sense and understood, Your Honor. Final issue for me is um, authentication. Um, we, we have proposed, and this is another thing that I would urge the state and the court, to simply agree to the authentication of police records, police lapels, 911 calls, those things that the state produced, official police records. State has not agreed to that. Um, and if and the, any caveat that I give on how long my case or my crosses take depends upon that. I don't want to be, and I've never, no prosecutor has ever made me, require somebody to then sit there and watch it and say, yes, this really is. And the jury goes out of the room and this and that. All I'm asking for is an authentication step for police records, police recordings, and, and official documents of the state of New Mexico. All they need to do, we would have agreed to this weeks ago. All they need to do is tell us which exhibits they want us to stipulate to. Instead of doing that, they sent an email that said, will you agree to stipulate to every single lapel video. My response is no. And this is what prompted our motion for an exhibit list because what they wanna do is they wanna say, will you stipulate to the rust videos? Will you stipulate to the lapel videos? I'm happy to engage in stipulation. Tell me what you want me to stipulate to. I will do the same and then things will go smoothly. 
if these people will not tell me what they want me to stipulate to, Carrie, we want to get this video in and we want to go from this minute to this minute. Do you have any objections? Should there be any redactions? Let's do it. They won't do it. All right. Listen, I'm ordering you all to go through and see what you can stipulate to. And I want to, I want that stipulation before me on the motion in limine day, which is July um, 8th. And how many, um, with respect to exhibits, let me hear why you would not want to stipulate to exhibits or, um, or at least have them known ahead of time. Well, I'm perfectly happy. I, ha I think the word stipulate and the word authenticator being merged here. What I, we oh. asked for was an authentication stipulation, just as authentication. Okay, okay. authentication stipulation. That's, that, that due, seems like that's due in the motion in limine day. Okay. okay. The second thing is, well, we have their witness list and their exhibit list. I'm happy to, as I do in all of my cases, provide a, a list back to them. I'm happy to do that. So I'm not, they, I'm not, I'm not opposing um, providing um, exhibits prior to the motion to eliminate day. Not, I'm not objecting to that at all. Ms. Morrissey. They filed a response in opposition okay. to right. our motion Listen. for an exhibit list. What I got it. I got about? it. I'm relying on Mr. Spiro. Okay. So when can you get, when can you exchange exhibits? As, as soon as I have the state's exhibit list, we can respond within 48 hours. Why can't they be simultaneous? They tell us they're no, exhibit. No, 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 okay. no. No, you, you know what? I'm not going to um, referee everything, okay? You all are going to do things professionally and in good faith. So get your, get your exhibit list out, Ms. Morrissey, and then in 24 hours, he will get his exhibit list out. Okay, let me let me give a deadline then for my exhibit list. I'm not okay, I'm gonna, to I'm gonna summarize this. Okay, so uh, stipulation on authentication of exhibits that the defense wants in. What about in I don't think the state I, needs that. And I I I will agree to those things if they tell me specifically the pieces of evidence that they want me they're to going stipulate. going to have to, Ms. Morrissey, because okay. they're going to have to file it on July. Eighth, no. Where? Where is it? We need. Eighth. We yes. need to know their exhibits way before July eighth, and and they need to know ours. J J July eighth, we'll leave everybody so. hamstrung. We'll still be arguing during trial. It, it, well, what I, what I would okay. So let me just divide this into two things, and I think perhaps the court will think this is a reasonable. Um, July eighth is the motion of limine day. Is that mm -hmm. okay? So so. The first thing, which is completely separate from everything, is just authentication. I'm going to ask for an authentication step. If, if the prosecution will not authenticate their own police documents, I will email the court and explain that. OK, and I've never seen that before. Second thing is on the exhibit list. If they give us their exhibit list on Friday, OK, July, uh, I've, I've messed up my um, on June 28th. OK, we will provide our exhibit list on July 1st. Why don't Mr. Spiro? All right, all right, here, listen, listen up. The authentication stipulation is due Friday. Okay, Understood. so that means that means that there's going to be a stipulated order that I'm going to sign on authentication. So, the uh, Ms. Morrissey needs to see that no later than um, get that to Ms. Morrissey on the 26th. And then Ms. Morrissey, um, I want you to look at it. And, um, uh, you know, I, if you can't stipulate to it, then we'll have to address it later. But I'm not going to have a hearing on it. Okay. Understood, Your Honor. All right. So that needs to get in. So show it to Ms. Morrissey on the 26th, the proposed order or, or the the uh, items you want stipulated, authenticated to. Then for the exhibits, why don't you? Give them to him July one, and you give you give him your exhibits, Ms. Morrissey, on July one, and he will give you his exhibits on July second. Okay, that works. All right, all right, and then yeah, I, I'm not worried about being able to pick a jury in one day. I think we're going to pick a jury even before the you know by the afternoon. But okay. Yes, Ron. Did I miss anything? 
I'm aware of these. I'm aware of these motions. I'm. I'll, I'm uh, I haven't decided what to do with them yet. So yeah, and, under, understanding sorry, that the court has set exhibit list deadlines, we withdraw our motion for an exhibit list based upon the court's ruling today. Uh, the state will submit an order to the court indicating that the deadlines are the right. first and second. Perfect. Okay. What else? This um, isn't going to get continued. And even though I'm uh, going to get that order in by Friday, do not think that that means stop working for trial. <laughs> Hello, you seem we frozen. <laughs> Did you hear that? Did you hear that? So, of course, this whole argument Friday afternoon and today was on this defense motion to dismiss the indictment with prejudice because the state destroyed evidence. And the judge heard all this argument and she said at the end, all right, I'm going to give you my opinion, give you my ruling on Friday. And now she just says, listen, I'm going to give it to you by Friday, but I'm telling you right now, don't stop prepping for trial. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, that means she's going to deny the motion to dismiss the indictment. If she was prepared to dismiss the indictment, we wouldn't. She wouldn't need to caution them to continue preparing for trial. I, I'm, I'm not. I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not frozen, Your Honor. Um, you know, I, I, the only thing else that I would say, and I, I, I once asked to pr approach Your Honor um, um, in this forum, and Your Honor said, "I don't know that that's possible." But any guidance. I mean, one thing that can reduce the court's time and maybe simplify this, if any guidance that the court were to have on any of these issues, um, you were able to, on a teleconference or otherwise, give us all a heads up. So, for example, and I don't want to pick on the state, but if you were to say there aren't going to be 13 experts, OK, or you were going to tell me that certain parts of this case, we're not going to have a civil negligence case about uh, how, how how movies worked in on Westerns in the 1950s. I mean, that would help. And you would have less motions and limines, and it would force the parties to. So and that would be an ask from the defense. And I think it would end up being a blessing for the entire um, proceeding and for the court's time. Well, what I'm hearing is you want her to, uh, you want, want the court to tell her to limit her witness list. No, 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 no. I don't mean that one. I, I just mean on any issue, frankly. It's oh. not that. I mean, we talked about that issue. I just mean in, if the court had guidance say at some point in a 10-minute tel teleconference saying, listen, I've looked at this. I'm not deciding the motions in limine. I'm not deciding things, but this is how I see this going. I think it would do a world of good and pushing the parties to simplifying this matter so that we can have a fair trial in front of a jury. Okay, so what, you're, so what I hear you say is can we, can we without this public forum of uh, you go first, you go second, you go three, four, five, that if, if the court's inclined to do this, I uh, it's by email. Well, the court can do it, however, the, 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 or by conference. Yeah, yeah or t t teleconference, or, or or whenever the court wants. The court can give guidance right now in front of whoever. I don't know if anybody's listening, but if anybody's listening, I you feel can do sorry it right for them that they're missing dinner. Yes. Yeah. Um, so they, you can do it now. I'll take guidance. I always take guidance from the court. But if the court would want to have a more informal proceeding, I think I don't. I do not court. want to have that because I do not want. Um, because everything is appealable and it's got to be on the record and it's got to be. Understood. Understood. Uh, I, I, I just want to put this on the record. The state has the burden. So I'm going to need to call as many witnesses as, as I need to call in order to try to meet that burden. I can't just cut my witness list in half. Nobody's, asking you, to be. nobody's asking you to, I'm giving you five to six days and that's plenty. Okay. All right. Thank you, Ron. Not anybody's first rodeo. Okay. All right. Um, have a good evening. And um, you. please, you know, the press is going to hound. Where is where's this order? Where is this order? Please don't participate in that. Every order will be at least by Friday on these um, pretrial motions. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you for your presentations. We're in recess. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. I don't know who that is. Before I dive into questions and comments, just remind everybody, almost 1,400 people <laughs> watching. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining me here in the Law of Self-Defense show. I am, of course, attorney Andrew Branker for the Law of Self-Defense. Um, 
Our sponsor of today's content makes this all possible is CCW Safe, a provider of legal service memberships. What many people mistakenly call self defense insurance, in effect, CCW Safe promises to pay their members legal expenses if the member is involved in a use of force event, and they do much more. They fly in a team of experienced homicide investigators to be your detectives on the scene. Otherwise, the only detectives are working for the prosecution, folks. Uh, Attorney Don West is their national trial counsel, one of George Zimmerman's defense attorneys, world-class criminal defense attorney. He will be effectively consulting on your case. I think the world is CCW safe. I'm personally a member. My wife, Emily, is personally a member of CCW safe. They're the best fit for me out of everybody who's out there. And I trust them. If you'd like to learn why I trust them, I have a little video at lawofselfdefense.com slash trust. Explains exactly why I chose CCW Safe. At that same URL, you get a 10% discount code for your own membership at CCW Safe. All that at lawofselfdefense.com slash trust. All right. So let's take a look at the Law of Self Defense member chat. By the way, we only really take questions and comments from the Law of Self Defense membership. You can become a member of Law of Self Defense. Put your comments and questions into the member chat for just 99 cents to be a Law of Self Defense member at lawofselfdefense.com slash trial for a two week trial membership. And Oh, there is a super chat. Or you can do a YouTube super chat, $10 minimum. And we do have a uh, euro, 20 euro. Thank you very much. That's that's well over $10. I used to get paid in euros <laughs> when I lived in the uh, Netherlands, worked there for two years. Uh, I'll, I'll address that. That's from Hiltfred. Hiltfred, I'll, I'll address your super chat in just a moment. For those who'd like to get your questions answered without having to pay $10 a question, you can become a Law of Self-Defense member. For 99 cents at lawofselfdefense.com slash trial for two-week trial membership. After the two weeks, it's still dirt cheap. It's only about 30 cents a day, less than $10 a month to be a Law of Self-Defense member. But try it out at least for 99 cents. Come on. For two weeks? Two weeks will, uh, yeah, I mean, come on. For two weeks and one month's actual membership, you get all the way through this trial. That'll be great. And you can cancel anytime you want, though we very rarely have members cancel. We have a very sticky and loyal membership, and I think you'll see why if you only try it out. All right, let me go to the member chat. Let's see what we have here. <clears throat> but up, 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 up. Let's see. Uh, I'm. I'm just going to address the, because there's a lot of them, the questions and comments. There's a lot of chatter among the members. They 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 talk to each other. We're a community. Um, so that's all fine. I encourage that. But I'll try to focus my attention here because of we're, we're over five hours in <laughs> to this live stream, folks, on just the uh, questions and comments that are directly related to the substance of what we heard today and the trial. Uh, let's see. Oh my God, when he said one to two days, that was amazing. <laughs> and that's exactly. Yeah, the judge is the judge is holding them accountable to their own. <laughs> oh my God. I can't believe he said that. All right, well. Oh, here, Paul thinks, what do you think of Wilson Combat Pistols? Well, I own a Wilson Combat Pistol. I bought it a long time ago, 1996. <laughs> so 28 years ago, I bought my Wilson Combat 1911, 45 caliber. Um, and uh, I put maybe 100,000 rounds through that gun. It was my competition gun. I carried it, my daily carry for 25 years. Um, and... Uh, and it ran great that whole time. I just actually got it back from Wilson. I finally sent it in after 100,000 rounds. Uh, I sent it in to be completely refurbished. It was the fourth time it's been refinished. Uh, but I had him uh, do basically a rebuild on it. And uh, it's like brand new now. It's 
I, I think it's amazing. No gun has ever shot as well for me in my hand as a 1911 pistol. That particular 1911 pistol. There's a lot of crappy 1911s out there, so you do need to be careful. But Wilson Combat, based on that experience, that's the only one of their guns I own. Uh, it's a great product. Uh, all right. Well, I think I think we got through that pretty quickly, actually. Um, okay. Well, I like this judge. I still like this judge. Um, I think she's been great. This ending was was fire. Oh, you say one to two days? <laughs> All right. You get two days. Tell you what, I'll give you three days of the eight. The state gets five. But I, I may increase the state to six and limit you to two. Be careful. That was awesome. All right, folks. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up, get home to dinner myself. <laughs> 7, 10 p.m. here mountain time. Thank you all for joining me, staying with me so long. I really appreciate it. I'll just remind all of you that if you carry a gun, so you're hard to kill. That's why I carry a gun. That's why I carry pepper spray. That's why I carry a knife. That's why several times a week I roll on the mat doing jujitsu. So I'm hard to kill. So my family is hard to kill. If you do any or all of that, so you're hard to kill. So your family is hard to kill. Then you also owe it to yourself and your family to make sure you know the law so you're hard to convict as well. Until next time, I remain attorney Andrew Branca for the Law of Self-Defense. Stay safe.